Hi there everyone and welcome to this video for paper 1 question 5 for the GCSE in English language. This is the AQA specification and for this video I'll be going through four particular skills that are always good to master for this question uh, with particular focus on the use of a picture as a stimulus and I think AQA is the only exam board that will give students an image to help to prompt or inspire their writing. And for this presentation, I'll be using a picture of a jungle scene with this bamboo bridge um, going across quite a exotic looking river. It seems all like a lagoon. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going through four particular skills. And the idea being is that we'll end this presentation with a much better piece of writing than when we started, because I'm going to be looking at the same piece of writing and gradually improving it as we go through these stages. So the five, the uh, four skills that I'll be looking at for this video are the sentence, sentence openers, sentence variation, vocabulary and descriptive devices. And these aren't the only skills that the examiner will be looking for when they read your descriptive writing or your narrative writing, but they are part of it. And uh, you will get marks for demonstrating you can write confidently and these skills will help increase the level of confidence in your work. So if we just look at this picture to begin with, kind of a bigger picture, you can see here that we have a jungle setting. Remember that the picture that they give you for question five, paper one could be of anything. Um, so let's imagine for this exercise that it is this one. And it will be printed in colour usually, uh, or it should be. And that will give you kind of um, vivid colours, uh, textures, shapes, Remember that good descriptive writing is all about the senses. You have to imagine that you are stood where this picture was taken and recreate this image in the reader's head, imagining that they cannot see this image. So obviously the smaller details will be the things that help with that. So the more detail you can go into, the common sense suggests the higher the mark because you are recreating that imagery in the reader's mind. So it's a good idea before you start writing for this that you use the space around the image in the answer booklet to write down some vocabulary, to draw a circle around the things of this image you want to talk about, to make a note of colours, to maybe write down some descriptive devices in advance, uh, and just to really think about planning your response and to think about what it is you're going to talk about and in what order. So some of you might have heard of a cyclical structure idea before, which is that you finish your piece of writing where you started. So for me, that would probably be the bridge because that is in the middle of this image. That is kind of the what this image is about. So I might start by talking about the, the uh, bridge and then I might finish by talking about the bridge. Remember that you do also have some artistic license. You can add things into this image. You can imagine yourself walking across this bridge. You can imagine a group of people walking across the bridge. You can imagine maybe a boat going by in the river or a crocodile in the river or a lion at the other side. Who knows if this is maybe in Africa. So, you know, think about what you might see if you stood in this place and watched this scene for about five minutes. What would move? What would you hear? What would you see? and so on. So don't be afraid to add things into this image as well. So we're going to start with that image in mind by looking at um, thinking about um, how we can start to improve this piece of writing. Now don't get me wrong, this piece of writing is okay. It, it would get some marks, uh, but we need to be able to reflect and redraft and improve our writing in order to make it the best we can copy we can possibly make it. We don't want to settle for second best, we want to make it the best we possibly can. And this could be improved. So, and, and this extract, this piece of writing, is what we're going to be using to gradually improve it as this video goes on. So hopefully by the end of this video, this piece of uh, writing will be more impressive than, than what it is now. So it says, the rope bridge swayed perilously over the blue lagoon. The trees were a mixture of shapes and textures. The bamboo of the bridge provided a woody scent and was mostly smooth but splintered in places. The other side of the river seemed to be a long way away. The sounds of exotic birds squawked in the distance. The mosquitoes buzzed in the heavy, humid air. So you can see the question at the top there is what would you want to change about this? Because there are things about this that need to be slightly more developed in order to make it slightly more confident writing. 
Um, so you might want to pause this video now to, to have a think or have a discussion or, or to write down some ideas about what you would want to change about it. Otherwise, continue watching. So there are some good things about this passage and you can see here that the, I have kind of marked it here in terms of things that would get you marks. We've got some impressive vocabulary like the adverb perilously, the adjective smooth, um, the word splintered there, which gives a nice contrast between smooth and splintered. We've got the, the word exotic. We've got the onomatopoeia squawked. The spelling is OK. Mosquitoes is spelled right. And we've got some alliteration, heavy humid. So there are lots of things in this that are good. But again, with English, because it's untiered, you shouldn't want to just settle for second best. You should even if even if you get a piece of work back that you're happy with and you're happy with the mark, you always need to be asking yourself, how can I improve this? Because there's nothing wrong with getting a higher mark than what you got before. So as you can guess, perhaps from the way I read it, the thing that's wrong with this really or one of the things is the sentence opens. You can see that every single sentence starts with the, and it makes this piece of writing sound like a list. And it means that that is something that the student is not very confident with. Uh, sometimes the or also is a simple word to for, that students use to join their sentences together. Uh, the problem is, is it doesn't really join them together and it actually makes, ends up making it sound like a list. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is sentence openers, how we can keep the same ideas of this, of these sentences, but change the word order in order to make sure that we're starting our sentences slightly more confidently. So you can see here, um, I have got the six sentences, but underneath in bold, I have changed them. So the beginning of the sentence is slightly more confident than it was before. So we've now gone from the rope bridge swayed to perilously comma, the rope bridge sway. So I've put the adjective now at the front, which makes it sound better. Um, I've taken out the trees and put in a mixture of shapes and textures. Uh, the bamboo of the bridge provided a woody scent is changed to smooth, although splintered in places. The bamboo bridge provided the woody scent. So I put the adjectives now at the front. Uh, a long way away was the other side of the river. I've put the verb there at the front, squawking in the distance. Exotic birds sang and hollered from the tree tops. Tree tops. And I've also put the adjectives at the front of the bottom sentence, heavy and humid, comma, the air was full of the buzzing of mosquitoes. So already, if we look at those bold sentences, I'm already starting to improve my mark because I'm showing the examiner that I can think about how I can start sentences without having to always start it with the same word. So what I get my students to do sometimes is I get them to write a piece of description for 10 minutes and I get them to circle the first words of every sentence to, to see if they are struggling to start their sentences in a varied way. So sentence openers is one of the skills that this, um, that this presentation is looking at. Always a good idea to avoid the all the time. You can obviously start some sentences with the, just not every single one, because it actually ends up starting to get boring to read and it actually ends up starting to be a list. The next thing I want to talk about is sentence variation. So again, I've kept the same uh, ch changes and I've now in bold put how I've just changed the sentence types a little bit to make it slightly more varied. So the first sentence, we've got a complex sentence now. Perilously, the rope bridge, which was suspended above a deep turquoise lagoon, swayed in the warm breeze that wafted through the forest. So we've now got a longer, more detailed, complex sentence. Commas are your friends with complex sentences. The reason why we know we've got a complex sentence is usually because there's lots of commas in it, separating different clauses. So we've got one, two, three, four different clauses in that sentence there, you could argue, um, splitting up it, splitting it up and um, giving the reader more detail. We've then got in the next sentence a slightly shorter sentence, but we've got a colon, so we've got some nice punctuation, but we've also got listing of words. And it's OK to list as well, dense, dappled, mysterious. It's OK to have a list somewhere because that's what writers do. Published writers do that, so why can't you? Okay, so we've we've changed the sentence variation there to a list. We've then got uh, another uh, complex sentence, smooth with from countless years of walkers and splintered in places around the edges, comma, the bamboo bridge provided a woody scent. So we've now got another much longer sentence there. 
uh, that might be a compound actually, that sentence, compound sentence, that, that third one. Um, we've then got another shorter one, so you can see we've got long, short, long, short. So it's really giving a patchwork of different sentence variation. Squawking in the distance, exotic birds who preferred to remain camouflaged and had an array of brightly coloured feathers sang and hollered from the treetop. So again, we've got another complex sentence there. And another one at the bottom, heavy and humid, the air was full of the buzzing of mosquitoes. Their fast beating wings flickered across the bright African sunshine. We've got a semicolon there as well, which again is impressive for punctuation. So we've now changed the sentence openers, but we've also changed the sentence types. We've got a lot of lovely complex sentences. And again, the reason why that first paragraph I read out wasn't very good was because every sentence tended to be the same. Uh, so we've now got a more confident uh, control of our sentence types. And it's OK sometimes to have a one word sentence or a two word sentence. Again, that's what writers do who are published. So it can't be wrong. So it's, if you want to emphasise something, it's OK to put it on its own, I suppose, um, as a one word sentence. Again, using the same idea of the bridge, the same image of the bridge, I now want to turn to vocabulary. And I've now, again, redrafted this a little bit more to include some lovely vocabulary. So I've got adverb, perilously, suspended, turquoise, lagoon, camouflage, hollered, flickered, squawking. So all of these words that are circled in purple here are impressive use of vocabulary. And again, what the examiner wants to see is that you're not just using a very simple uh, register of vocabulary, but you're using some words that are actually slightly more complex and more impressive. Words that you might have picked up perhaps from reading of the extracts or from any of your work really at school that you might have done on synonyms, for example, that they're always a good idea to have in your armoury of, of things to use. But things that you've had to think about and, and things where you're showing off really that you do know some more complex vocabulary and obviously these are all spelt correctly as well so that's also impressive for uh, spelling punctuation and grammar. Moving on to descriptive devices again for AQA at least um, descriptive writing isn't about fitting in a descriptive device in every sentence that's unhelpful and it's unnecessary so you can see here in about 10 lines of description I've only got two devices I've got whispered so a bit of personification there and I've also got a simile at the bottom so be very selective about your descriptive devices. You don't have to fit them all in um, because writers don't do that either. Uh, so what is the point of getting students to put a descriptive device in every sentence if it's not actually what writers do? So, again, it's OK to obviously decide which devices you want to use yourself. Maybe you're more confident with alliteration and personification. Maybe you like similes more than metaphors. So it's OK to choose which descriptive devices you would prefer to use because you think you can use them more confidently. So again, there would be some marks there for descriptive devices, a bit of personification and a simile. And there might also be some alliteration somewhere as well. Heavy and humid is still in there as well. So some alliteration perhaps. So now that we have our finished paragraph and we mark it in the same way that an examiner would mark an exam paper, you can see that we have got an awful lot more skills than what we started with because we have consciously thought about how to change our writing. One of the things about English is, and writers and artists who paint pictures well will tell you is that there is never a moment when writers are happy with what they've written because there's always changes you can make, there's always a drafting process and some writers actually go through three or four drafts of a novel before they actually uh, publish it. So English is always developing. You can always change it. And obviously you don't have that luxury in an exam uh, because it's, it's this one opportunity. Um, but as part of a proofreading activity for five minutes at the end of the exam, I would strongly suggest that you, um, you go through your work and make changes. That might mean crossing things out. The, the examiner likes to see you crossing things out because it means you're thinking about what you're doing. Putting asterisks in the margin, that's also another option as well. You know, a lot of students do that. So it's OK to just uh, cross things out, to change things as you develop your response. So if I read this final uh, paragraph now, and you can see the ticks correspond to a particular skill that the examiner would give you marks for. First of all, it's all spelt right. The grammar's good. Um, you know, if, if there was more writing, it would probably be in paragraphs as well. 
So there's lots going on here. So it says perilously, the rope bridge, which was suspended above a deep turquoise lagoon, swayed in the warm breeze that whispered through the forest, a lush canopy of foliage, dense, dappled, mysterious. Smooth from countless years of walkers and splintered in places round the edges, the bamboo bridge provided a woody scent. A long way away was the other side of the river, cloaked in mist. Squawking in the distance, exotic birds, who preferred to remain camouflaged and had an array of brightly coloured feathers, sang and hollered from the treetops. Heavy and humid, the air was full of the buzzing of mosquitoes, like a hundred jet engines. Their fast-beating wings flickered across the bright African sunshine. Okay. So I hope you would agree that what we've got now in these same uh, amount of text is something which is written much more confidently than what we started with at the beginning of this um, presentation, because we are thinking about some of the skills that the examiner is looking for in order to get you the marks. Okay, So that is just this, I suppose, shorter video about descriptive writing. Always a good idea to redraft, to think about what you're writing, to get a partner to look at what you're writing, to give some notes and changes perhaps. And then hopefully the more you do this, the more confident you will be when you go to write that just piece of description or story in the exam. OK, so thank you very much.